Hello, I'm Brett Knowles from PM Squared Consulting. This quick summary provides an overview of how the Michigan Department of Transportation has used the Balance Scorecard to significantly improve its performance and reporting back to stakeholders. Like most government agencies and departments, MDOT had a comprehensive strategy that was well documented and made available to all stakeholders. Nonetheless, they found it difficult to communicate to stakeholders how they were performing and what returns they were providing the taxpayer for their dollars. Having worked with us, they've produced a balance scorecard which now is a prominent part of their communications on an ongoing basis on how the department is performing. Let's take a look at what happened. First, we took their strategy and began describing it as a cause and effect diagram as a strategy map. So, to do that, we outlined who were their stakeholders and what they wanted. Uh, to make those stakeholders' needs met, we developed the internal processes that we needed to track. From there, we could determine which enablers, culture, competencies, enabling structures they needed. And then finally, what are the financial platforms that it's built on? So, in this case, the overall objective they decided was to provide an integrated transportation system that's low cost and allows consumers to be on time. So to do that, the overall objective is to provide the total transportation network. And there are several things they needed to do to make sure that was successful. One is make sure it's low cost. Two is increase throughput. And three, ensure on-time travel. Increased throughput was put into the internal perspective because not only does it relate to what the stakeholders wanted, but it's specifically internal processes to enable that. And if they were able to increase throughput, obviously that drives down their cost and will help ensure on-time travel. So how do they get there? Well, the other internal processes they needed were the capability of having more passengers with a lower investment in rail, airports, roads, um, and regain their trust and faith in the system. So again, as a strategy map, we can begin drawing the cause and effect relationship between these objectives. You can see one of the cultural things they wanted to begin building was getting that entrepreneurial culture inside the government organization. But they also needed to make sure that they focused on the right people and they leveraged technology. So the strategy map began to emerge their key objectives as they saw in leading the organization. Again, it's important to note we did this based on their existing strategy. We did not have to invent anything new. In fact, this only took about three hours for their leadership team. The next step is we began to agree on what the weightings were for this year. Now, those objectives would transcend time, but this year their key objectives were about attracting and retaining people, building trust in the system, finding excellence by taking risks so that they can increase throughput and help ensure on-time travel. So this becomes a core theme for the year. Within the project, we began to take a look at which process is linked to that and how well they're performing, and which projects link to that and how well they're delivering on their benefits. We also began to realize that we needed to cascade that corporate level scorecard down to different departments. So gradually it radiated throughout the department as each group began to figure out what they did to respond to the corporate level objectives, like deliver the right services. Operations, for example, need to continuously improve delivery. Service needed to figure out how they could add more services faster, etc. So from this, the corporate level strategy map and scorecard began to cascade down. Now, of course, within that strategy map that we developed, the next step is to add performance indicators so we can begin to see how well the organization is performing and get alignment around where, as a leadership team, we need to focus our attention. It wasn't enough to do this one-off. We needed to produce this into a monthly report that was available to all stakeholders. In this case, both the commissioners, employees, and to a certain extent, ratepayers and users. So this scorecard became available to a wider part of the organization. We also used our initial research, additional research in processes and projects to be able to provide some level of Six Sigma or lean drill down into the specific performance cause and effect relationships. In fact, within the software, we can begin to drill into performance issues and understand those in even more detail. Overall, this allowed the organization to quickly move ahead, not only with performance reporting, but alignment of operations. Things began happening like carpool activities got implemented significantly faster than they would have before. 
we began seeing significant savings by leveraging technology through such things as setting up an electronic contracting system. We saw that uh, things like uh, selling user statistics to automobile companies uh, contributed incredible additional revenues that came out of that entrepreneurial capability. And even other leveraged technology things like getting uh, you know, cell phones used to uh, identify potholes faster, which both reduced the cost of identifying them, and secondly, the consequences were reduced by getting that potholes filled faster when they're less significant. So to learn more about this and other case studies on where the scorecard has helped organizations perform better, please join us at pm2consulting.com.